Hi there. In this video, I'm going to share some neat tricks about the time scale in Microsoft Project. My name is Erik van Herk, and this is the Project Corner, the place where I share information about Microsoft Project and related tools. So let's dive into time scale. What is it? Well, right from the start where you open up Microsoft Project, you get this kind of view. And of course, there's a little schedule in here, uh, and we'll dive into that in a moment. The key thing to take away from this view, and I'm looking at the GAN view now, is that it looks at weeks and it looks at Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday are grayed out because Microsoft Project is a work application. So it considers most people won't work with Microsoft Project during the weekends. Obviously, there are calendars that you can use so that you can work in the weekends and over time, but that is not the standard. But for, for instance, for this project, it doesn't make sense to have a weekly overview because every project task is bigger than just one week. It gives you a nice overview of what's coming, but what if I want to see the whole schedule? There's a couple of things that I can do here. I could uh, look into the timeline view here and I could drag this little bar here and I would see the whole schedule and it would change the time scale to um, months. And then there is the weekly numbers or the first day of that week. But that doesn't really make any sense. There's another way that we can look at the whole schedule and that's by going to view and then going to the entire project. Now it gives you a bit more on the left side and on the right side and now you have a nice overview of the whole schedule. But again, that second line here doesn't make life that much easier. July, August, September, October, November, December. So. It is still just one month, but if you have a much bigger schedule and we can just uh, blow this thing up, uh, four months, 12 months, and let's see what happens if we do the entire schedule now. You would be presented by quarters and months. I actually like this view better than the previous one. And let's, uh, let's move back and see that previous one. So the uh, quarters and months makes a lot of sense. But what if you want to manipulate this view a bit more? And uh, there's also this slider button here um, and you can use the control key and move with your mouse up and down. But that isn't that accurate as well. It <laughs> It just doesn't make that much sense to use either of these options. If you're more interested in the dates on top than with the Gantt chart itself. So let's have a focus on that time scale because we can actually manipulate what is shown on this time scale. So let's do that. There's a right click and then there is the option to go into the menu called time scale. And I really like this time scale option because it gives you a wide range of actions that you can actually do. There is three tiers. Normally you would only see two and there's the top tier, there's the middle tier and there's the bottom tier. And currently it shows only the two tiers, the middle and the bottom. I don't know why it didn't choose the top tier and then the middle tier, but well, well. So what we could do in this instance, for, for example, we could have the top bar being years. So let's do that right now. We can also choose one tier, by the way. So three tiers. If we go up here and we go to the tiers and we select the highest ranking calendar unit, such as years, months, weeks, and days, you would like to have that the same way. So top tier would be years months, weeks, or months, weeks, days, or years, quarters, months, which would make sense in this instance. So let's go. 
I go to units and I select years and I would select account to be one because I want to have every individual year in here and I would have the option to change the label so this label actually makes a lot of sense because sometimes you have a very big 10 year spanning uh, project and you just won't have the option to have that full blown year in here you could also choose year one year two from the start of that project and you can choose the whole wide, wide range here January 2009 and let's go for the 09010 option now I can also manipulate the half tier the middle tier and I would use that to change that to quarters for instance and I would have the first quarter and on the bottom tier I don't want to go to days and count five what does count five mean every five days it counts so that makes sense that this is two this is five seven this is 12 yeah but what does that say it doesn't really actually say anything so I'll push this to weeks and I'll change the label to actually be week one or week two. No, I want to have this one where it says it's one, two and 52. These are the weeks of the year. So right now we get pre uh, we're presented with a nice overview of all the years and the quarters and the week numbers. But once again, I didn't remove the five here. So let's head back onto the time scale and let's go back to the bottom tier where I said one. I want each week number to show up and I can change the size of each of those tiers. So I can go and make that a little bit smaller. And let's click on OK. All right, so this makes sense. Now I can see when the next year is going to start and that we're working in the third quarter and the fourth quarter of the year and that we're currently in the week 27, which is very nice to know, right? Some organizations require that you know the week numbers in a view like this. So let's see what we can do uh, more with this. I can change the bottom to uh, the middle tier to months and see what happens I can change it to January uh, I just have that label there and I can have that size a bit more which gives us another nice overview where I would have the months and the week numbers and I could even change the top tier to be quarters and there might even be an option to have the quarters combined with the years yes here we go so I would like to have the uh, this this is a nice one where it says the Q1 and then it has the year number in there as well so let's do that right now and see how that revolves all right so this is a very interesting very nice time scale that i actually can use when i print this out and printing this out is something that doesn't work that well with microsoft project i don't know if you know this but there is an option if you select all these tasks and you go up here and you go to copy there's actually the option to copy a picture and if you copy the picture there's a little menu popping up and that little menu gives you the option to see everything that is currently in the screen or uh, make a print out of it or create a gif file and that's even nice so i can even make a time scale example gif and i can have the selected rows and i can have the whole project in here or i could have the as shown on screen and I click on OK and I would head over to my desktop and I would have 
this lovely time scale here including the quarters the months and the week numbers including all the tasks that i currently have here this is easily shared in a document or in a mail much better than creating a pdf out of that file returning to the time scale there is one caveat here and that is if you change the time scale here uh, or on top or you use the zoom option you will lose this time granularity let's do that i can change this to oh, there there's this really neat if you go into view <laughs> there's a time scale here that's quite new um if you go into months it changes everything here and if you return to weeks it doesn't return to the weeks that you have set yourself so that is a, a little tricky to have in there um, the way to work around this is actually to save the view the way that you wanted to have it for later purposes and make sure that no one changes that view afterwards so let's do that right now I'll click on undo a couple of times and hope that I can revert to my original view of the time scale here we go so this time scale is actually like I like it I cannot save this time scale there is no saving option in this time scale uh, bar which is which is a shame if you ask me but stepping over that there is the option to save this screen or this this can chart uh, the way it currently is and we go to view then we go to can chart and we click on save the current view save the current view so that it can be used in the future the views the fields and any filter on the group that is applied are saved with this view so let's go I'll call this one uh, time scale correctly set and here we go so I currently call this view time scale correctly set and if I navigate away to another view and I for instance screw this one up by uh, heading over to view or yeah heading over to view and I click on zoom and I'll zoom in a couple of times and here you see that and here you see the time scale even changing to three days what what does what is three days that doesn't make any sense to a normal person so this view now is screwed now I don't have that week numbers anymore I have the months still and I have quarters but it's offsetting and if I return to the weeks view it doesn't have my week numbers in here hmm but luckily I saved my other view so here's that time scale correct set if I navigate back to that it has my week numbers so this is the way I would say is the ideal way to go about having that fixed time scale so what you would do is you create these views specifically for sharing purposes now there's another thing that's in the time scale menu and let's head over to that and then we'll close off so no working time how does it show up and currently let's let's do a zoom let's do a zoom hold on I'll go back to the GAN chart and I'll zoom in a bit zoom to one week that is very big but this makes excellent sense for my schedule so I'll move to scroll to the task and here we have a task and currently it's Friday and here is a white space and a grayish space that grayish space is actually the non-working time and if we go back to that time scale setting and we go to the non-working time there's three options here do not draw simple as that it doesn't show up uh, let's show that 
so it doesn't show up that that actually isn't a working time well you might opt for that but then again it's nice to know that you have a saturday and sunday off there's also the option to have it in front of the bars and now at first you might say okay well this is cool now i can see my gaps within the weekends and let's zoom out a bit where i have the view of weeks again or no let's do that on days here we see the days but the point that i'm making here or the point that i'm trying to make here is the issue with all these boxes here now a person could think that this section is a separate is a separate action compared to what is said here but it is the same scheduled task it is the same initiation phase so i would opt away from having that time skill set to in front of the task bars for the non-working time but this is a personal thing if you like that just keep it there um, then there's the option that is default behind the task bars let's see that again where we have that little gray grayish color here for the non-working days and we can set a specific calendar to say that I'm not going to work on the 15th of July until the 20, 28th of July. So let's do that. And I will show you what happens with the time scale. Uh, so I'll head on over to the change working time and I'll create a new calendar. Example. A vacation make a copy of the standard yes that would be fine and I'll select these values here and I would say vacation boom so these are now exceptions and I'm not going to work on those exceptions so but currently what is shown here is the time scale and the non-working time for the standard calendar which makes sense because that is the standard calendar for the whole project. Let's get over with it. And I have the example vacation. And if I click on OK now, I will see that there's grayish color here. Now, if you have a resource that abides by this vacation schedule, that action that he's going to do or she's going to do will actually skip that whole time frame and move to uh, the 29th of July for its next assignment. But there can also be resources that don't abide by that vacation situation. But you want to have that visualized, for instance. So let's get that back. There's the non-working time and there's the example. And there's also options to change the pattern and there's options to change the color. You can have that as orange. Uh, because we're Dutch um, or you can have that back to the default which was actually grayish and I'll move to the standard calendar here mm -hmm. and there you go so we're back to our schedule and just to uh, show you again the time skill correct set actually has that correct time skill again so be sure to have your own schedule um, have your own view that has the correct set of time skill that you would like to have shared with others or that you like to work with for instance that can also be the case there's no option to share that time skill across different views though that's too bad anyway this was how to use the time skill in microsoft project if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and click on that like button. I won't ask you to hit that bell button, but yeah, you already know. And that next video is going to be in two weeks from now on another Wednesday. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there once again. Thank you very much for watching this and I hope to see you next time.